Hello everyone, Ball Street Social Club, Ask the Club, the section of the channel where you get to send in questions, or in this instance, I write them because it's stuff I want to talk about. Uh, we're going to kick it off uh, with the team of the year. Uh, we've obviously wrapped up, we've done our season awards on Monday, you can go back and check that video out, but the lads and myself are going to pick our 11s of players we've picked Cherry picked from around the league to make the best possible You're team. You're off your head. And this is what I'm thinking. Look at this. Can I just say, that is that is the team. Well, I don't understand how this could not be the team. Edison. Now, now granted, it is basically a Man City. Well, no, it is, it is in fact 100% a Man City and Liverpool combined 11. But we're talking about the team that won the Premier League. With a hundred points and a team that could beat United and the team the, 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 the Champions the league, league final. Edison, Edison. Well, let me talk through. Edison. Me, let, let me talk through my team. And I've gone over Edison. I've gone for Edison in goal because I think he has revolutionised oh, the way Looks that cool. Man City play out from the back. I think he was the perfect. I think he was a, a wonderful addition to their team and squad and the league. He was terrible against Liverpool, and that was also fine. I've gone for a back four of Kyle Walker, Vincent Company, Virgil van Dijk, and Andy Robertson. <laughs> Convince me otherwise. This is your job in a moment. Midfield three of Fernandinho, Silva, and De Bruyne. I don't see how you can have anything other than that. Okay. I'm going I'm to obliterate you put, what, yours. Okay, that's I'm interesting. I'm going to obliterate no, yours with science. science. And a front three of Mohamed Salah, Roberto Firmino and Raheem Sterling. Right, so let's start with where you're wrong, for starters. Well, the Golden Glove winner was David De Gea. And like we said... He's got he's the Golden Gloves. Front, yeah, with Golden Gloves. Not only has he just... Has he got a ton of clean sheets, he's also pulling out world-class saves yeah, on a it, weekly basis. Yeah, exactly. Weekly but then again, basis. All right, well, so was Nick Pope because he played for a team that conceded no, no, loads of not shots. World yeah, but class David De Gea... Conceded 144 shots in the Premier League this season. That was on target. Saved 115 of those. 80% save percentage. I think that, no is, else is, close. that is one of the. You... Only Nick Pope's got a better save percentage. But what we're saying there with David De Gea is he's making big, big saves in big moments. Take the Arsenal game. 14 saves against Arsenal mm. in the, at the Emirates. Tim Howard that was a record. Of saves Premier League record that. for America in the World Cup. <laughs> and we bought him, and he was a good player for us. For a little bit. The right, I've gone with Trent. You go for Trent Alexander. I have gone. Oh, oh, give me the rest of your team. Go on. All right, I've gone for Vertonghen and me. Why have you gone? Not for ben me. Lee? I've gone for Ben, ben Lee. Lee. Not me. At centre half. I'm more of a fullback oh. rather than a centre half. But I just think Ben Me. I think Ben Me. The spine of that. But what he's had to do without Keane, and I think Ben Me's. Uh, listen, if you underrate him at your peril. I've, no, I'm not. Look, I'm not saying it's wrong to put him in there, but I think you've put him in there just he's, to make it look no, no. like you know more about football. He's than better you do. than every single one of the defenders that's not called Virgil Van Dijk in your team. Right. So why isn't Virgil Van Dijk in your team? Because Ben Mee's had a better season. <laughs> <laughs> it's the team of the season, not who's a better player. Okay, so uh, I've gone for so, Alonso at left back. Fine. You've gone for okay. again a player that's not really hit. Who's the same not had this season. season as Andy Robertson at left back? Mm. Whatever. And he plays left wing back. Um, yeah. I'm going to avoid midfield. I'm going to talk about the forwards. So oh, I've gone for Monday, Salah on the right. Okay. I've gone for Sterling on the left. I don't think you can really argue with that. Uh, and I've gone with Kane, who I've only just gone with ahead of Aguero, because obviously Aguero's Aguero. 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 He's, he's played about 22 games, but he's played yeah, like, he's got like 20 goals. Yeah, can't be That's why he's then. not. And it's Kane. But I'm saying I've gone for him over. Even Aguero. talking about him, De Bruyne and Silva. I think I assume we've all gone with that. Can we just highlight the fact that you've put Paul Pogba as your DM? Yeah. What well, the fuck are you He's on? in this team as a DM, but it's not necessarily as a DM. Just Let put your me... hand down, put your hand down. <laughs> he's actually played there um, to our frustration for most of the pissing season. So he's played, he's played there. in the two-man, not a single-man pivot. No, he's no, not played on his own. He's no, but it does matter because you're saying he's playing in defensive midfield. Dave, shut it. And here's the reasons why he's in over Pogba. He's had more key passes. 25 to 13. Big he's skill, had more assists. skill for a defensive Ten. midfielder. Shut up, David. We're not playing like that. He's had 10 over um, Fernandinho's three. Oh, he's also had more tackles. He's also created more chances and scored more goals. So, of course, David De Gea, golden gloves in goal. Okay. 18 clean sheets in the Premier League this season. Okay. Pretty decent. That's decent. Carl Walker at right back. Okay. That's I correct. think he's massively improved on the ball. <laughs> correct. He's doing very, very well there. Um, and then I've gone with Virgil van Dijk. Correct. Leads the Premier League in terms of duels won, in terms of percentage, 72%, which is very, very good for a centre-half. Mm -hmm. I think he's really shored up Liverpool. If he started at Liverpool, Liverpool potentially would have pushed United a little bit harder for that second place. <laughs> yeah, go then we've got yeah, Jan Vertonghen partnering him. Robertson was a, a good correct. shite. <laughs> a good shite. A good shout. A good shite. <laughs> That's how good he is. He was like a really good poo. Um, which we know could be an amazing experience. Um, good shout. Robertson's good, good shout. 
good shout. Yes. Um, but there's one guy in there. If you catch Ashley Young, the Premier League I'm player of the season in his back pocket. Give me that. Give me a brick. Young. That is Ashley Young. He's got to be in there for that title win that he got. I think Robertson's a close second, but Ashley Young, in terms of his Man, consistency, you, you have, his passion. Dave knows what's going on about has, football. Just, just to clarify, <laughs> Dave has got Andy Robertson in there. We're not entertaining this Ashley Young bollocks. <laughs> Ashley Young's in brackets, because I just wanted brackets, to talk about it. As well he should be, yeah. um, And then into midfield, I think our midfields are the same. Again, they're correct. Uh, yeah, Fernandinho, Kevin Lebron in a silver. So, no, so what you say, just to clarify one final time, yeah. not Paul Pogba as the sole single pivot holder. No, no, no. I there. think Paul Pogba's got more strengths going forward than in a defensive sense. But that's my personal <laughs> opinion. Mate. <laughs> you, you know, whatever you want to do. And then my three. I've got an attacking team. Mohamed Salah, Harry Kane, Sterling. I think if you were talking Champions League team of the season, Firmino goes in. But Premier League team of the season, Mane to Kane's got to go in there. Mane's having a bit of a problem Milner, from the goal. Milner, to be fair. Um, Milner, top assister in the Champions League this season. Just you beat, a reminder. You beat Spartak Moscow about 47-1. We, <laughs> we beat the best team in the country as well. Uh, Who? You, West you didn't play United. <laughs> See last week's video for no, reason why West Brom are the best team in the league. Yeah. Um, okay, yeah, uh, decent shouts. There's the three teams. You've seen them now. Who do you think, if these teams all went head to head in some sort of mad three way game of football, which team would come out on top? Oh, well, more importantly, just to clarify why Steve's team would not be the winner of that. Dan, the football fan, uh, asks, uh, who would Dave and Housen take from Liverpool and vice versa for Paul? Taking, I'm taking Salah to stick on our right wing, to be honest. Yeah. I mean, let's not pretend we wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, oh, no, no, on principle, I can't have him. Yeah, I'm glad you would. Uh, and I'd probably take Trent as well because we definitely need an upgrade on that right hand side. Uh, to be honest, if you've got anyone who used to play left back at school, then we'd probably take them and all, to be honest. Okay. Could be an upgrade in Ashley Young, wouldn't it, Dave? Virgil van Dijk, I think, would be the big one. <laughs> yep. I think he'd be very, you know, in the United defence, would be perfect. And the, the big things in bringing the ball out, what United sometimes lack is that player that can come out. When Lindelof don't play, mm -hmm. United lack that link. But I think Firmino. Yeah. I think Firmino could be really interesting for Mourinho and for United in terms of what he does off the ball defensively. Where are you playing him? This is the thing, like, it'd be, it'd be an interesting team, maybe the uh, tip of a diamond. Interesting, shout you know, He actually played. Sort of in the 10 footers against Brighton. Yeah, he, he, he looked very good. Able, yeah, 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 absolutely. Uh, on the flip, I mean, look, <laughs> I mean, he's not good enough to get in the team of the year, but he would get in Liverpool's team. Um, David De Gea is the obvious one. I think if we'd had you think about the amount of points he saved you, we're only getting to a situation now. We've had Mignolet for so long. And look, he's had some great games. He's won his games, penalty saves and what have you. But... He, we haven't had a goalkeeper who's consistently pulled out match-changing saves. Yeah, Gary's had a few, which is to his credit. Like, but the hair would be a massive upgrade at, at this point in time. Anthony Martial, I love Anthony Martial. I think he's tremendous. And I, I said two summers ago, he Mourinho will not get on with him. He will not find a way to make him work consistently. He won't not be able to get the best out of him because he'll play him on the wing. He won't get enough out of him. If if he was going and there's talk, he might be going. I'd be all over, all over. So Marshall. you'd not take I a full pop, to be honest. I, look, I would, look, I would, look. I'd have no problem with Liverpool taking Paul Pogba because he's a tremendous footballer. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah. you wouldn't take him. No, no. I'd, I'll go would on he not it. be your first choice if you could have anyone from the United squad? Paul Pogba was the first guy you picked. No, De Gea is the first. Is absolutely first choice. But then I think with keepers, uh, De Gea is a wonderful keeper. But I think there's other keepers that come around that hit that same level. Paul yeah. Pogba, you're not going to get another midfielder as good as Paul Pogba. Um, okay, JD Affinity says, how many managerial sackings, resignations will happen over the summer? Uh, I'm not sure there's going to be a po huge amount. Pochettino's the big one, isn't it? Mm. Whether it, I mean, it, he's, he's clearly put his cards out on the table there, hasn't he? He's clearly thrown his big bollocks on the table. Well, we said this before, he's, he's, he's questioning their Shopping. ambition, he's questioning whether they're going to throw the, the, the dough at what they need. Mm -hmm. People assume that could be signings, but that might be keeping people, that could be replacing somebody. Well, that could be. He's having to, look, he has to contend with the world where Carl Walker has basically doubled his money at Man City and he's got to win a league title and he's got everyone, he's got everyone in a WhatsApp group going, Lads, lads, <laughs> you want to see the facilities, you want to see the beds, you want to see the, you know, how much, look at my, here's my bank, here's a screenshot of my, of my paycheck this month, and here's a, oh, by the way, and here's a little selfie with the Premier League trophy, how you getting on, on yeah. 50 grand a week. I think that's, um, that's the big thing, isn't it, is upgrading their wage structure, I like that they've got a wage structure, that's very important, best players get paid the most money, makes sense, yeah. but in terms of like upgrading each of the tiers, 
that could be what he's talking about because yeah. players like Aldo well, Viral that's leaving because they're not getting paid. There's enough. no sense in the be in them saying, okay, great, well you can go out and you can sign the big sign of the summer. You can go and beat everyone to him because we're going to pay two hundred fifty. That doesn't matter for me. That don't matter. It, well, that that the point is. They do that does that doesn't fix the problem that creates problems because what how does, there's no twenty world. players now going exactly Harry Kane, Deli Ali, Christian Eriksen, uh, Jan Vertonghen, Hugo Lloris the list the list goes on. Danny Rose has already been agitating yeah. about it. Those lads all see it doing that going uh, Gaffer. Who's this? Can I have a way? I think that's, that's, it. I think that's the play then. That's the play from Pochettino that he wants to keep because if you look at that squad player by player. You can compare that to City in terms of how good they are. Yeah. Like they, they've got that quality, but it's keeping it. Yeah. Having players like Davinson Sanchez, da- Deli Ali, those players are only going to improve. Yeah. But you've got to keep them by paying them. Yeah. And I think that's the play. I think that uh, in addition to that, I think Conte is going to go, isn't he? I, I, the FA but Cup could possibly. It he looks so grumpy. I think I said I at the care. start of the season that he would be the first to go. I did think it'd probably be this side of Christmas, to be honest. But it still looks like he's going to be the first to go. I, Outside, outside of There's him, talk in the, with top the fans six. were saying at the weekend, get him out before the FA Cup final. Like, well, the next question is it will the FA Cup save Conte? I don't think losing an FA Cup final is going to keep your job, to be honest. I, I, think, <laughs> I think that I think Conte will definitely go. Pochettino, if he gets a big offer in, if something, you know, as an example, I don't know, I don't know whether he would go to Chelsea. I don't think he would, but like you, know, you never know if a club with loads of money comes in and goes, mate, forget that. But, but I, I think they've had every all. other manager. <laughs> It's all about the, the working environment is very big for him. Mm. Like the training ground, the players that, you know, they don't come to play football, they come to train. Yeah. It's how he, how he does it. Can't see Chelsea. The only one that you'd see would be PSG. Mm. But then they've just got Thomas Tuchel's about to sign there. So there's no real avenue for him to move this summer. Yeah. So I think it is just about him being like, look, I to make this club as good as it can be, you've got to pull a bit, you know, spend Wait a bit of cash. the inevitable Mourinho yeah, breakdown uh, next season and get the United it's, job it's, it's next year. It's probably coming, and I think he's the name that I think the United board really favour to come uh, at some point. They like that he can work within a budget and be competitive, and as much as it hurts to say as a fan, I don't think United's board cares about Champions League and Premier League. I think they are more in the Arsenal mould of keep us in top four, don't break the bank, and I know people are going to be like, look what you've spent recently. Look at what we'd spent before Fergie went. We, we was making profit on transfer for four or five years, uh, or eight years even, before Fergie went. Mm-hmm. So I think they're, they're doing that because they have to do that. They're not doing that because they want to, to push. If they wanted to push, we wouldn't have been haggling over a couple of million about Perisic in the summer. Yeah. And we might have seen a different United, because I mean, Dave was talking about this before actually, where um, there was a lot of talk of United going uh, free at the back for this season. And I think that was in preparation for a signing that didn't happen. Yeah. Uh, and that may have been Perisic. So I think that on the surface of things, it looks like United are spending a load of dough. Uh, but the, a lot of it is show. I think you know, there might have been an element of Lukaku signing was because it was a big signing. Flexing the muscles. Yeah, and I, the same definitely with Pogba uh, and the sponsorship surrounding that. But I think they would probably really appreciate a manager that is supposedly can work with youth like Pochettino, can work underneath a budget and maybe won't be as abrasive as someone like Mourinho clearly is. That's an interesting one. Yeah, Man United fans, let us know. Would you be into Pochettino as the next boss? The only other one, and I think I speak, I'm going to speak for Evertonians, I've never done that before in my life, um, <laughs> is Sam Allardyce to go. I think every Evertonian watching this would be very, very happy to see old, uh, yeah, see the gravy the train league. stop, so to speak. He's chuffed, isn't he? I, I love the fact that every time he's spoken, he just keeps dropping in the where this team was when I took over. Yeah. Is literally at the end of every single sentence that he said. Past that, maybe an outside shelf for doing the sensible thing and sacking Neil Warnock before having to wait till the season starts. <laughs> yeah, that'd be good, I reckon. Can't that'd be a good go, move, yeah. yeah. We're going to boot him in sorry, three sorry, months sorry, anyway, so just... Yeah. You know. Nah, nah. But um, yeah, I, I think that's a decent chance. I think it's an interesting summer, isn't it? Because you've got... Arsenal are going to be in transition again. You know they're going to have to completely rewrite, you know, rip up the rule book of what's been going on at that club and start again from fresh. Now Chelsea have got a good habit of coming back strong when they change managers, so they might be fine. And that regard, <laughs> players just, just go, oh, wait a minute, that's how you play football. That's how, that's how you, how you score yeah, goals, exactly. lads. So that's a possibility. That that'll be an interesting thing. And it's against Spurs, who knows what's quite going to happen. That's going to come to a head at some point, I think. And you've also got the transfer window starts very early and ends very early. Yeah. Plus a world. I think the transfer window ends within like two and a half weeks of the World Cup. It's mad. So, yeah, there's going to be a scramble. So if clubs haven't got their deals in place now, they're going to have their arses well, slapped. We're a, we're a month away from the World Cup starting. It's mad. It's but, mad. I was like, oh, we we'll have a nice little break and a relax. Nah, you get back after the Champions League final, it's like two and a half weeks till the World yeah, Cup Yeah, there's going to be maybe a week off 
Uh, and in that week off, players aren't going to want to talk about moves. Uh, so if they're not wrapped up now, they're not going to be wrapped up before the World Cup. Yeah. And I mean by wrapped up, you know, like agreed in principle, yeah, rather absolutely. than like, you know, all signed. You mean like, you know, on the Big Dipper in Blackpool, agreed with the manager, like, you know, that's the kind of stuff we're looking for, absolutely. Um, <laughs> yeah, Jed's brilliant. Uh, yeah, let us know your thoughts. Anything we've discussed in the comments below, make sure you drop a like on the video as well. Go back and watch the end of the season awards if you haven't watched it from Monday and check back on the Borsi channel for some amazing content, wrapping up the season and look into the transfers this summer and beyond as well. Thank you. Tchau,